So it turns out that there's a bunch of different ways to solve systems of equations, and another way is by elimination. So we're going to spend two days on this because it's a little bit more complicated to learn possibly, but once you learn it, it will go a lot faster with some, with some things that you're trying to solve. So go ahead and fill in eliminate right here. It says this is another method to solve systems of equations that eliminates one variable very quickly. So that's kind of the key word there. That's why it's called by elimination. So when you have systems of equations that are in standard form, this is often the way that's easiest to use. Standard form means you've got your x, and you've got your y, and it generally equals a number. And you can see right now I have them lined up. So this, this system of equations, you'll notice there's something kind of similar about this one, that there's a 3x and a negative 3x. I want you to think for a second, if you were to add those two terms together, it basically disappears, right? Now the whole idea behind this is that if this side equals this, right, and then this also equals this, that means if you were to add this whole section together, then that whole section equals this whole section added together. So it looks a little confusing, but just remember that you can line them up, and if one side's equal and the other side's equal, you can add basically vertically now. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right here. Now this one's already set up right so that something will disappear. Sometimes we'll have to change that a little bit, but first we're going to practice this first step. So negative 3x plus 3x is going to be 0x, which is really just 0, right? So as soon as you get that, you can even cross those out and say 0. And then 2y plus 4y, you've got two y's, four more y's, you have six y's all together. And it's positive. 7 plus 5 is 12. Now at this stage, our x is gone, and now we have a much more simple equation to solve, because we can divide both sides by 6. Oops, not subtract. Divide both sides by 6, and you end up with y equals 2. So you can see that you can figure that out fairly quickly probably more quickly than by substitution, because it would be a little more complicated to solve for one of those variables. And now to find x, you go back to one of the original equations. It doesn't even matter which one. I'm going to choose this first one. Either way, you'll get the same answer. And instead of a y, we now know that y equals 2. So we're going to pop that 2 right in there. So we've got 3x plus 2 times 2 equals 7. 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. 7 minus 4 is 3. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 1. A lot of times it's more concise to write your answer as an ordered pair, so make sure you pair up the x first and then the y second. And that's the one point. So if you were to graph these two lines, that's the one point where they cross. And those are the only solutions that work for both of those equations. Okay, so let's just write down the steps here. We kind of already went over it, but let's just write it so you have it. Write both equations so that x terms and y terms line up vertically. So that was when we stacked them like this. One variable must have the same number. Here's the thing we didn't really focus on yet. One variable has to have the same number but the opposite sign. That's the only way that they're going to disappear, essentially. And in order to get that to happen, this is kind of a key point here. That's why it's in a green box. So to each term in an equation, you can multiply by a number, and you can also change each sign to the opposite. What you're doing there is essentially multiplying everything by negative 1. That seems like kind of a weird concept at first. Just on the side here, let's talk for a second. So if I have two things that equal each other, let's just say 2 plus 3. So we're going to use real numbers just to kind of illustrate it. So we all agree that 2 plus 3 is 5, right? Now if you were to multiply this whole equation by 4, you'd have to multiply 4 times 2 to get 8, 4 times 3 to get 12, 4 times 5 to get 20, and now do you see how the numbers are different, 
but the relationship is still true because 8 plus 12 is still 20, right? So this whole idea can be used to, s that's a key thing that we're going to use. And so when you're dealing with the algebraic expression, it might say something like 2x plus 3 equals 5, but you're allowed to multiply. You'll still have a true relationship if you multiply everything by the same number. So you'd have to go 3 times 2x to get 6x, 3 times 3 to get 9. And notice it's everything that's added or subtracted, or anything that is just sitting there on the other side of the equal sign. 3 times 5 is 15. And you'll still get a true relationship, and that's the key way that you can get this idea here, where you have the same number but the opposite symbol. And we'll practice it, no worries. After you get the same number and the opposite symbol, you're going to add each set of like terms. So the like terms are the ones that have the same variable, or they don't have any number at all. And then one variable disappears. That's the best part, because that was your whole goal, is to get it so your equation only has one variable. And then you're going to solve for the other variable. And then, this is kind of confusing when it's written out in steps, you're going to substitute, but we will practice it, the known value into either equation. Solve for the unknown variable. I generally just use whichever equation looks like it will be a little bit more simple to solve, or smaller numbers, or whatnot. Okay, let's practice this. That's the important thing. Okay. Now on today's, it's pretty much practicing the first few steps. Because you'll notice we already have the same number and the opposite symbol. And that's going to be the case for your practice pod as well. And then tomorrow we're going to practice changing it so that they have the same number and the opposite symbol. So on today's, just verify that you've got something that's going to disappear. And we do. 1x minus x is 0x. Whenever you have a just a blank variable, just remember that there is a 1 in front. 2y plus 1y is 3y. And then 13 plus 5 is 18. Now we can divide both sides by 3 to get 6. And now, remember, we want to go back and figure out what our other variable is. Actually, I think I'll use the top one, not that one. OK, because then we have a y that's kind of already by itself, because we have x, I'm sorry, not a y and x, x plus 2y equals 13. And if we plug that y right in, that 6 right in for y, we've got x plus 2 times 6 equals 13. 2 times 6 is 12. And now we really just have to subtract 12 from both sides to get x equals 1. And don't forget to put it in an ordered pair. So we've got x first and then y. OK, last example. Let's verify which one's going to disappear. So it looks like we've got a positive 6y and a negative 6y. And when you add those, those are going to become a 0 or disappear. OK, so we're going to draw our line. We're going to add these. 5x plus 1x means we have 6x's. That is gone. You don't even really have to write the 0. If in your head you realize that's gone, you can say 6x equals 50 minus 26. The numbers are a little larger. Think of it as 10 minus 6 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. And then we have to divide both sides by 6 to get x equals 4. And we still end up using substitution, but at least we found the first one very quickly. I think this bottom equation will be easy to use because we have an x kind of already, it doesn't have a coefficient, so we don't have to multiply anything. We're just going to say 4 minus 6y equals negative 26. Subtract 4 from both sides. I know it feels a little backwards, because usually we have the variable out in front. Think of, remember, this is negative, and this is also negative, which means we're going to add those to get negative 30. Their 4 is gone. Here's an important part. So think of it as 0 minus 6y, which is negative 6y. Divide both sides by negative 6 to get y equals 5. And now don't forget your ordered pair. 
I think I always say that because I tend to forget to write it as an ordered pair because I feel like I'm done right now. Four and five. Like I said, that's just a concise way so that everyone knows what the input is, what the output is, and you've got your answer really quick. All right, so go ahead and work on this pod and let me know if you